This is Volleyball DNA. All right, guys. So today we have somebody that we've been trying to get a hold of since January, since she was elected as one of the board members of the newly formed PNVFI. And finally, uh, she's here with us. But, you know, I understand why uh, it was tough to get a hold of her because, you know, it's a new role and a lot of big things coming for volleyball, especially beach volleyball. So today here in the lab on Volleyball DNA, we have with us the OG Queen Eagle from Ateneo, Charo Soriano. Charo, thank you so much for the time. And finally, we get to catch up. Thank you so much for having me also, Anton. And I really do apologize that it's been, it took me quite a while to, to do this with you. But now I'm here and I'm ready to answer all of your questions. And I'm really excited to have this conversation with you. Guys, take note that Charo just got off a meeting with some people from Thailand because the AVC Continental Cup is happening in a week. Oh, by the way, by the time this interview is, is happening, Charo's probably already there in Thailand. So take note that this conversation is happening uh, a couple of days before she leaves for Thailand. So again, Chara, thank you so much for the time. I want to ask you, how has your life been since taking on this new role as the youngest board member in the PNVFI and uh, the program director for beach volleyball in the Philippines? Well, first of all, um, it's been quite a whirlwind. Uh, <laughs> we actually, uh, I did not honestly know that it would take a lot of um, what do you call this legwork mm -hmm. early early on in this in this um, year so when we were elected we we really got to talk um, our president sir tat suzara mm -hmm. formed 10 commissions already and we were in the planning strategic planning stage uh, nobody really also knew that uh, tournaments especially international tournaments will push through mm -hmm. this 2021 so um, I think that was around March when we found out that we got invited to, to ABC. And um, of course, it's a lot of prep. And um, we didn't expect that to be very early in this, in this year. However, once we found out, Anton, we did a lot of things. We worked on a lot of um, planning sessions with the National Team Commission, the Beach Volleyball Commission. And of course, Sir Tats um, being our president and Sir Don, our secretary general, everybody came on board and we planned out um, the process on how the teams and the players, the coaches, and everybody in the beach national team can prepare for this upcoming Continental Cup. And it's quite big because it's an Olympic qualifier. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the first time that our players will um, see action after about, actually, after, I think, SEA Games. This is the next yeah. tournament after SEA Games. So everybody's really excited working hard and just really hoping for the best also. And I, I know some of our beach volleyball players who will be competing for that Olympic berth were winners in the SEA Games, the last SEA Games. So we're going to talk about that in a bit. But Chara, I want to ask you, did you ever imagine yourself like, uh, you know, when you were playing in the UAAP that one day you would be in this position to make an impact with regards to the game of volleyball here in the Philippines? Um, honestly, I did not. I did not know that this was going to be my path. And I'm just really blessed that it, this has been and it's choice mm -hmm. for me. And it's self-imposed also. I'm really just happy to be able to give back mm -hmm. to the community, to the players, to the young athletes and provide to them uh, the things that I have had when I was younger as an athlete mm -hmm. and the things also that I did not have as well. So I know both sides and that's what, uh, my role and my responsibility is as a board member in the federation. I know a lot of players were very happy being that you are a player yourself, uh, that you are a part of the PNVFI. Uh, they were sharing their congratulatory tweets with you and saying things like, wow, there, there's a lot of hope right now for Philippine volleyball. But you know, when I first met you, you were with BVR. You were actually still playing. And then... Um, it, it, I think it's. I think it's what fitting. story are you gonna say? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, well, I, I remember you won the championship in BVR Boracay. Re remember yes. that? Yeah, yeah. And then yes, I, I, that was way back 2016. 
Yeah, like, yes. So, so see, Char- Charo could still do it. Charo could still play, <laughs> diba? Dur- During these times when when ABS-CBN was promoting BVR. But, you know, I think everything fell into place because um, they know you're knowledgeable about the beach volleyball scene and then you became, you're now the program director for, for beach volleyball. I want to ask you about uh, the near future, like um, knowing that you guys trained in uh, Pagodpod, um, I, I want to ask for your expectations, like uh, in the near future for beach volleyball, knowing that now you've established this program and have an idea on how to move the game forward with, with regards to beach. I, I think when we when we mention expectation, it really goes both ways. So uh, I expect for the players to really give their best. And I've seen it happen in Pagod Po. They train their uh, twice, thrice a day, wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning, sleep at 9 p.m. in the evening, wake up again, train, rest, nap, eat, sleep, repeat. It's been like that. They're very disciplined. And when you see something like that, and it's a collective thing, and you won't see it with just one person, what, what I like about the beach volleyball culture is they really push each other to be better. So there's intercompetition within the teams as well. And that, for me, is very much healthy. Because you're going to be with somebody that sees your strength and your weakness and would want you to be better so that they can be better too. So my expectation for, for the team is really to give all out, 1,000% play with heart and play with pride for our country. And I think likewise, they also have expectations in return with, with us and the Federation. And I feel also that that's something that... Um, is really discussed or has been really discussed. Um, I really talk to them, ask them what they need, ask them their dreams and their goals and their plans in the next, not next year, not next two years, but the next five years. Where do they see themselves in the next mm-hmm. five years? And it's important for us being, being young leaders also to know that, to know which direction they want to go. Because mm-hmm. that way, we will know also how we can help them with their dreams and their direction as well. So... Um, there, there are expectations on both sides, and I can just really say it's been a symbiotic relationship, mm. and we're just really excited for, for the tournaments in the future, and the Federation has been active in trying to find international tournaments also for us and Don, and that is something that we've been really asking for for, for the young players. It's really exposure um, in the international scene. All right, I want to talk about the players, Charo, who will be competing here at the very popular Seapons duo um, Cici Rondina and Bernadette Pons. You've got Dij Rodriguez and Baby Love Barbon. And from the men's side, the man, Jaron Requinton, James Boitrago, Jude Garcia teaming up with Anthony Arbasto. Um, let's talk a, a, a little bit about the tournament. So, correct me if I'm wrong, there are two Olympic berths up for grabs here for, for the Philippines? There's actually uh, two tournaments that, two tournaments. that we need okay. to join. So, um, the semifinals is a prerequisite, so we're we're actually fighting against the continent, the zone zonal winners mm. in the continent. So there are five zones: the eastern, the western, central, the the Oceania, and also the winners from the last continental cup. So of all the teams that won, uh, the ones that actually are going will be Sri Lanka. New Zealand and Japan for the women's and for the men's, uh, they have five teams that they're playing against also. So the competition is really, really hard. And um, for the women's, if we're able to win against two teams, uh, then we get to go to the finals. So there's semifinals first. It's a qualifying round. And then when you win that, you enter now the finals. And in Mm. the finals, uh, you play against former Olympians and people who really want to qualify for the, for the Olympics and who have been doing it in the past years also, some of them even decades. So these are really experienced players. Mm-hmm. And that for me is very good exposure for, for young athletes like Cece, Pons, Jaron. He's only 20 years old, 21 years old. So um, a lot of the things that will happen this week or in the next two weeks will really make an impact in their in their career so i'm very much happy for them well chara i hope i hope you your stay in thailand gets extended i hope by the time people are watching this interview you guys are still there and they're gearing up for the finals but chara i want to ask about the uh sipon tandem 
Uh, so you've you've been with them for the past couple of weeks, seeing them train. Now, uh, what, what what do you think makes this tandem special and people gravitate towards Bernadette and and CC as beach volleyball players representing the country? I think it's really their chemistry together. It's so mm -hmm. fun to watch them play, and you really feel the intensity. And uh, I see the balance with their character, also their personalities. Uh, CC is really intense when she plays. CC shouts. She really commands and directs. Pons is much more calm, and I think having those two, those two um, personalities together in a competitive um, arena or in a competitive scene, it's just really there's magic. There's magic there. So uh, you see it when they play. They play against men sometimes, and they're really competitive. They know each other and. It's different when, and I keep on telling this in, in the other interviews also, mm. when you're with you're playing with a partner and then just one movement, mm. one antic, the partner already knows how to react and respond. Uh, so there's really chemistry and uh, there's really communication with the two. And that's something that CC and Pons have had, especially during the pandemic mm. um, and the quarantine also. And all the things that they, they, they experienced, uh, it really brought them closer together and that's a plus for, for a tandem team. So, yon. And both of them are really competitive and good players mm -hmm. as well. Charo, what you were explaining earlier about what a tandem needs to have, it, it gave me flashbacks of uh, when I was covering BVR. And I think that's where a lot of the fans really learned about the dynamics of beach because it's very different from indoor. I also remember covering Dij Rodriguez and Baby Love Barbon. Uh, these are players that also played, uh, be, have been playing beach volleyball for a very long time. Uh, what about their tandem? Ano naman na masasabi mo tungkol sa kanila? Deej and Beloved, although they are a new tandem, I've been seeing them play also mm -hmm. uh, for the past uh, month, mm -hmm. month and a half or so. And you really see Deej. Deej is um, quiet, but she's steady. She's like a steady, quiet warrior. And what I like about Deej is... Uh, she has a lot of control with the ball. She improved so much over the past year, um, strength, conditioning-wise, uh, mental-wise. And you see her steadiness when she plays in the court. So by steadiness, I mean she doesn't really make errors so much. Uh, if, if somebody like that plays, then uh, a lot of the pressure will now come with the, com the, the competition, with the opponent. Because if the opponent makes an error, then we get a point. But Dij, mm. I think her steadiness will really help their tandem with Beloved. Beloved is very cerebral. Mm. When you look at her, her physique, uh, she's like CC. And they partnered in the UAAP. They won. Uh, they were the champions in the UAAP, both Beloved and CC. And I see some similarities with how they play their physique. Beloved, however, is cerebral in a sense that I think she has 10 eyes inside <laughs> the court. I am not kidding. I'm not kidding. When you look at her, she's um, not that tall. She's very, she's meek, but she has the eyes and she can really see the opponent. And that's something that that is important in beach volleyball. You know that you have to be present all the time. And I think with Belove, um, she has this presence in the court and she really knows uh, where she is, where the opponents are, where her partner is. So she's, yeah. I think, the steadiness of Deej and the cerebral, the, the, the magic of the eyes of, of Beloved, uh, that's going to be something exciting to watch as well in the ABC. Charo, you also mentioned Jaron Rekinton, 20 years old? Jaron is 21. 21? Years okay. old. Wow. I'm not mistaken, yeah. Around that, 2021. 20, so, Jaron and James, uh, they're the tandem. James is also quite young. Yeah, uh -huh. they're almost the same batch. All right, your breakdown of uh, their play style. Jaron and James. Oh, my gosh. Uh, okay. James is somebody that I see that has a long, long, long career with beach volleyball. And um, I feel like see James kasi he's tahimik lang inside the court. But you really see that there's intensity within Parang he's he's um, finding his way when he when he would play. But he's such a strong, strong player. And we keep on telling him that 
Uh, James is somebody that's very humble. Uh, James will never say also that he's really one of the best. So I think with having a personality and a character like that, um, James will have a lot more potential for growth. Mm. Uh, he always wants to be better. He doesn't feel that he's already the best. So he would always keep on pushing himself forward. And James, uh, with the right support system, and that's Jaron. And Jaron will talk about him also his personality in a bit. But having Jaron and the right support system, James really has a lot of potential to be one of the best players also here in Southeast Asia, Asia or the world. Wow. Wow. Yeah, they're, and these are young, young players. They're very tall. They're very athletic. Uh, and they're coming into their maturity stage already. So um, really, and I, I've said this a while ago, if only we can give them more exposure mm -hmm. international-wise, then we'll see really how much they can grow or we'll guide them. What are the things that are lacking? How do they feel with this game and that game and all those things? Jaron, on the other hand, Jaron is such a, and I call him baby Jack. Um, he is uh, our baby in the team and um, it doesn't seem like it because he's one of the tallest also and he has a lot of uh, power inside the court but what I like about him is his energy he has so much good positive energy inside the court that I think that's something that you need especially in times where in you're, you're not performing your best or let's say the opponent is how many points ahead Having the energy of Jaron there uh, can really help you uh, believe that you can do it, believe that you can win, believe that you can get the gold. So that's mm -hmm. something that, that I love uh, about Jaron, playing with him also. In Pagod Pod, we would normally also play scrimmage with Ja. So I've uh -huh. been also his tandem teammate and it feels really nice uh, playing with him, playing with that energy. Wow, Chara, you know, the way you rave about these players, I, I want to ask you, um, do you see Jaron and James as, because based, based on just what you, everything that you just said right now, uh, you see them as being the poster boys, like the tandem that will carry the flag with regards to beach volleyball here in the Philippines in the next coming years? Um, Jaron and James, yes. But also, I want to add all the other players in the mm. list as well. Mm. Everybody, and I, and I say this with much conviction, everybody in, in that team, the men's team, uh, they have so much potential. And they mm. really, when I, I, I was mentioning Kanina, they push each other, right? You yeah. see that more so in the men's. They're mm. really competitive. Mm. And uh, regardless if you're five years older or five years younger, once you mm. step inside the court, everybody's equal. There's no more kuya or ate or like this. Everybody really fights for a spot or a slot in the national team, uh, especially in uh, the ones for sea games also. So uh, it's good to watch the, the competition. And it's good because you see them gradually improve and you see them help each other out. So they're all, I'm very much excited for, for their careers, everybody. Uh, even Krung and, and Jude, uh, mm, mm. the other team that's going also in the AVC. And I've talked to them recently about their tandem as well. All right. Uh, I, I've seen uh, Krung, Arbasto, and, and Jude also play before. Um, ano naman, what, make, what makes their tandem special? With their tandem, and um, I asked them this also. I, I was talking to them in Pagod Pod in mm. one of the nights after training. And I, I asked them also, uh, what about each other do they like the most? And because these guys, I keep, on, I keep on asking them, so do you fight? Do you fight inside the court? Do you fight outside the court? <laughs> and then they were like, we have never fought at it. Um, we respect each other so much. And I think, with their tandem, they're nahihiya with each other in a sense that I don't want to make an error because mm. uh, I want to be the best for my partner. I want to be disciplined as a player because uh, I, I'm shy with my partner or I respect my partner so much and I respect the commitment of my partner so much that I have to match it and I have to also be more so my partner can also see that I'm giving a lot of effort. So with, with, with these types of relationships, you really see that they have respect for each other. They want to put, push each other to be better. So uh, Jude and Jude and Krung, they're one of the most competitive. And inside the court also, you'll see that type of intensity. Uh, they're very disciplined with the things that they eat, in their training, their physique, their mental state. And 
um, they're steady. Strong mm-hmm. and and Jude and I'm excited to watch them play because you're gonna hear a lot of shouting. You're gonna hear <laughs> a lot of talking. You're gonna hear a lot of the. You're gonna see a lot of the. Hopefully they can do that in the tournament, but mm. you're gonna see a lot of their secret claps, you know. And it's fun to watch because you you really can tell. Okay, these guys know each other already. Well, there you go, guys. You you just got a breakdown of the strengths and what makes the tandems who are going to compete in the AVC Continental Cup special from none other than program director Charo Soriano, the logo. From the BVR. Thank you so much, Sarah. We will change that soon. We will change that no, soon. No, 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 no. It, it, it's it's Plus, perfect the way it is. It's perfect the way no. it is. <laughs> Wait, people don't know that. <laughs> no, I, 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 they're probably like, I'm kidding. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, they're going to be like, oh, now I see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sarah, while I have you, while I have you, um, I want to ask you your personal. Um, expectations for the ABC uh, Continental Cup in Thailand? Well, uh, my personal expectation is uh, we can win in the semifinals. Mm. And that's something that's really our focus. It's mm. one day, one game, one step at a time. Uh, once we hit that, we get a few games in the semifinals. In the women's, you only need to win two mm. games. Um, so it's the finals that I'm also very much excited to see. And uh, we're now in, in, in the space we're in. We're believing. Mm-hmm. It might not be a high probability. It might not be a high percentage. When you look at the numbers, you look at the experience, we really are, and you can see it, and I can see it, we really are the underdogs. But Anton, we believe in the story of the underdogs. Yeah. We believe that we believe that even the players who have not had experience in that type of international competition can win the game. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of factors in beach volleyball also that are, and that's one thing that I love, that's very dynamic. Um, even though you, you look at the, uh, the teams playing against each other and you can say that, okay, this team is Lamang because they're taller, they have more experience. There's so many other factors that can actually help this underdog team. And mm. me, I, I believe that once we get control of the things that we can control of, our skills, uh, the tandem, the relationship, the communication, and all these things, mm. it can help. Uh, if we're steady with those things, it can help bring us uh, higher in terms of the rankings internationally. So expectation-wise, uh, and we've also said this to, to the teams, we are here not to pressure them. We are mm. here to help them with, with their experience. We are here to give them more exposure. And that's something also that um, our president, Pat Suzara, mm-hmm. said. Uh, he sent a video to us and he was really reminding the teams also that the number one thing that we should not forget is beach volleyball is fun. Mm-hmm. Beach volleyball is a sport that you enjoy. You couple that enjoyment and that fun with com- competitiveness and dreams and hopes and that's where that's where we're leading them. That's where we're going together. So, you know, I really don't pressure the teams, uh, but they all know within themselves what they want. So that's a, you, you mga ganon na tao. You don't need to pressure them. You need to nurture and guide them and just give them all the support that you can do. And that's something that we want to be, uh, we want to do for for these young athletes. I don't know about you guys, but to me, the only reminder I need to know that beach volleyball is fun is the video of Charo and Z on a coconut tree passing to each other. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was That's fun. Been our yeah, it was really fun. It's um a lot of the beach players all over the world would do that. Like I, I'm not sure if you saw the the tandem that played uh, that peppered uh, by the volcanic eruption in Iceland. And no, I have not seen Norway. that. I have not seen yeah, that. Yeah, so we've been trying to replicate that in the Philippines. We just pepper Spiker Sieve everywhere we go and we feature the place. And it's yeah. that is fun. But also scary. That's a high coconut tree. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. And, and when, you, when you went down to the sand, <laughs> when you jumped off I of know. it. I know. I was like, my knee, my knee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll we'll talk about that later. Um, 
I think it's important, Charo. Uh, for, well, I, I want to say congratulations again and uh, good luck, best of luck to, to you and the entire Philippine delegation competing in the AVC Continental Cup in Thailand. And like you said, this is just the beginning. I mean, this is the first tournament since the SEA Games for most of our athletes. And this is just the beginning. And you're planning for more and more international stints for them, for the whole program and the level of volleyball with regards to beach reaching a higher level here in the Philippines. So best of luck, Charo. Best of luck. Thank okay. you so much, Anton. To continue our conversation, I think it's important, and we always do this on Volleyball DNA, uh, we always talk about the players who paved the way for the new generation of volleyball stars. And I mean, you, I, I mentioned you earlier as an OG Ateneo Queen Eagle because, I mean, during your time, you were the Queen Eagle played for Ateneo in the UAP for five years, was former Rookie of the Year, best scorer, best receiver. I mean, every time I would ask, like, the time of Sina Gretchen, Sina Phil, I, I would ask them, like, like, who's their ate? They would say, Charo Soriano's their ate. So... Uh, yeah, they're just saying I'm older. That's it. <laughs> no, but... Uh, Chara, I, I, I want to ask you uh, like about those times, like uh, your UAP career. Like now that you know how big volleyball has become here in the Philippines, if you had a chance to go back in time to redo your UAP career all over again, what would you do differently, knowing what you know now? <laughs> knowing what I know now, um, I guess before I would have to say. I wanted to have given more time uh, in strengthening my body. Mm. And also, I would have wanted to have more experience playing uh, abroad as well when I was younger. And perhaps just having more competitions. Because during our time, we didn't really have um, a lot of competitions. Mm. We prepare for the UAP after that. There's on season and there's off season, and mm. you can't you can't see that now. Now it's really whole year. You have games, and this goes to um, both the collegiate players and the club team players, and now to the national team. That's where we want. It's really a full on career wherein the whole year you already have tournaments that are planned. Same mm. time namin parang hindi siya ganon ka grabe but i know in the 90s during the time of um at the coach maye prochina and and um uh, coach T Thelma, uh Verena, a lot of them had uh, exposure internationally eh. so uh, nawala yon nung time namin so now it's really slowly coming back so ako siguro one thing i wanted to change sana is um yun nga to listen to my body more to really parang strengthen my body more because we didn't have that before. Eh. Hindi kami masyadong, we weren't so much into strength and conditioning. We would only play strategy ganyan. But um, I felt that that's something that I could have done more, yung strengthen myself physically. I also want to ask you about um, the players that you played with during your time. Like, uh, who challenged you the most? And who do you think like has an interesting story to tell uh, based on volleyball during your playing years in the UAP? Um, I think what was very interesting or who, who I played against now had an interesting story also was um, Manila Santos. Mm. Uh, Nang now, uh, she's really one of my idols when I was playing. We're oh. both number 14 in the UAP. Uh, I really, I was really idolizing her because of her physique. Um, grabe siya tumalon. Uh, she's so disciplined as an athlete. And ang hirap niyang kalaban eh. Sobrang hirap niyang kalaban. It's so hard to block uh, somebody like her. She's cerebral. She sees the blocker. She sees the defense pattern. And she's so um steady. So, And I know she has also a number of injuries. So for me, that's quite interesting. Because the resiliency niya to come back and play again, even even um, in Chopo Mucho, for her to to really um, prepare herself and then to come back and to play again in a club team, that's that's amazing for me. That takes a lot of courage for me. So idol ko talaga yun siya. Idol si Manila. 
I I never knew that. I never knew that uh, idol mo pala si si Ate Ila. I, we we had Ate yeah, Ila. Yeah, Ate on Ila. The show. <laughs> yeah, we we had her on the show uh kami ni Den. She was our second ever guest on the show. And yeah, I remember her talking about uh, there was one year that she sat out because yun nga yeah. she, she she was injured. Were were you 14 pala? Uh I, I was 14 because somebody uh, I had a senior that was 8. But ah, okay, okay. I shifted to eight when she graduated because eight is Leila Barros, of course. Ah, okay. So, so <laughs> my first volleyball idol. So number eight, you were number eight because of Leila Barros, but fourteen what, what, was because, because of Ate Ila. I was born on the fourteenth, also. Oh, I see. Okay. And then she was fourteen as well. Okay, okay. I want to ask you about Ateneo Lasal during those times. I know there was not a, I, it did not spill over to volleyball, eh, but like. Ateneo Lasal, what what were those matchups like with with you going up against Ate Ila? Well, during that time, although it's been it's been steady about the rivalry with Ateneo Lasal, regardless of of um, the sport, mm. I feel during our time, because with volleyball, it wasn't as exciting as basketball. We didn't have a program yet when we started with with Ateneo volleyball. We would only train maybe thrice a week. Mm. Uh, at one point and that's so much different now now it's my twice a day training pa. before we just had thrice a week training for training so the level of Lasal during our time was really up there they've mm. been winning championships mm. Ateneo before we started like we were bottom mm. uh, so the disparity of, of the skills it didn't it wasn't as exciting when we would fight against each other but a lot of the fans still watch because there's a there's a rivalry already in their head now. Okay, it's Ateneo and it's Lasal. And that changed um years on after uh, after I graduated, time na nila Gretchen, nila Z. Yeah. You can really see the match up already happening. So during my time sa volleyball wala pa. Tsaka friends namin lahat. <laughs> I, it, it, Rivals it, it, there. We're really it's a close knit community during our time talaga. So so it it was friendly during your time when, when yeah, you were, when you were playing. Yeah, it was friendly. Okay, okay. Yeah. Interesting. May mga, well, syempre, maraming din na players. So in the yeah. court, you'll see a lot of like um people parang talking or parang people being very competitive, their comments inside the court. But off the court, lahat kami friends, we would go to the uni games, mm-hmm. we'd see each other in different ano, in different gyms and it was really parang Hi, hello, blah, blah, blah. see you later. Or oh, receive me palo ko, ah. mga ganyan. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a good community mm. when that's we were good. starting. That's good to know. That's good to know. All right, Charo, let's go back to that jumping off the coconut tree thing. Because I was genuinely <laughs> scared also when you jumped off because knowing the history of your knee. And yeah, I, I, I remember uh, you posted a video of your injury and I was shocked when you posted that because um, there was another there was a basketball player his name is Sean Livingston he suffered the same injury the unhappy triad and I remember he was being interviewed they asked him if he's ever watched his injury and he said he's never watched the injury he said he would it at the end of his career but in your caption Mm. you you said you watched it a hundred times to be able to to get over the fear so I wasn't I, really kidding, yeah. Grabe, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chara, I mean, your your advice to anybody, because injuries are injuries are part of the game. Injuries are part of sports, but you know, you overcame it. So what's your advice to anybody who has to deal with something like that? Like an injury that could be career ending. Uh what would you say to those people? Well, um, I guess with, with the story that you mentioned, his was very much different. Uh, what happened was he did not want to look at his injury or the, or the moment that he got yeah. injured. Mine, my coping mechanism is very much different. Also, mine is exposure. So yeah. I exposed myself so much. So watching the, the, the clip, seeing myself hit the ground, seeing my knee bend and hit mm. the, the floor. Me, like, um, scrambling, shouting. I was tapping on the the yeah. Taraflex already and screaming and crying. I watched all that so I can expose myself and desensitize myself to that moment um, until there comes a time when I'm so desensitized already that there's no fear already. Or if, if there is fear, that that's something that I've already accepted and moved forward. 
uh, from. So sa akin was a different coping mechanism. So my, my advice to the people who are either in their own injury journey or recovery journey, and for those also who have lost a lot of time in their career, you have your own journey and it's yours. And do not compare your journey with the others. There are other stories that you would want to read up on or to hear that can, that can help you, motivate you in your recovery period. But don't be so hard on yourself. I'm saying this because some people can recover quickly. Some people can recover even a longer time. But uh, the more important thing is you yourself, uh, you're grounded and you, you have a support system that's so important as well that will understand where you are every step of the way in your journey. There, there are going to be bad days. There are going to be good days. There are going to be better days also. Hopeful day, days and despair days. Pero lahat yan kasama sa journey mo. So it's one thing to get injured. It's another thing to use that injury to get to know yourself and to better yourself. So once you're finally okay, you're stronger. Say you have had a lot of wins already. You know your limit. You know your boundaries. You have new hope, you're resilient, all these things that you learn from an injury. You have to, to be able to accept that. And come the bad days, make sure that you have friends, you have family, you have loved ones around you that know where you are so they can help you also and learn how to accept their help as well. So it's really hard. I understand that. But it will pass, promise. And I hope that you use that, that injury, that, that moment, that journey to get to know yourself and um, really be a better you. There you go. Words from a very wise woman who has been through a lot of trials and tribulations in her life, Chara Soriano. Man, you, I have to say, man, you are very strong for, for, for the way you coped with your injury. And like I said earlier, uh, it led to a lot of things, opened a lot of doors, and you eventually became a champion in, in BVR. And, you know, I was fortunate enough to, to witness it. Um, I, I said it opened many doors. One of the doors that opened was you becoming a coach in 2011. <laughs> and uh, I, I'll never forget the picture that encapsulated that moment and that opportunity and that journey for you. Phil was carrying you, your players were carrying you, Beatan was also in the picture, and, and you were just filled with, with joy. I want to ask you about that moment because, because <laughs> a, a, a lot of people always talk about that, like that was Ate Charo's like, um, coming out party, like finally the champion yung Ateneo. How did that opportunity come about? And was it something like, oh, I'm going to be the coach now? Uh, how did you accept it? <laughs> I mean, I didn't. I didn't really have a choice. I was, <laughs> what happened, ba? No, wala ba si Coach Roger during that time? Wala, Coach Roger was coaching San Sebastian. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, his mother, mother team also. Uh, so San Sebastian is playing in the Shake East V League. Ateneo is also playing. So the I was the assistant coach of Coach Roger. I was still okay. doing my masters. I was studying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um I'm past now my playing years. So they made me an assistant coach. And then there during that time when Coach Roger was not able to be the head coach. They asked me, ask me, <laughs> they asked me if I can be the head coach. And um I didn't really know what I was <clears throat> getting myself into. Uh, <laughs> I said, yes, okay. Uh, Coach Clint was there to help me. Uh, Coach Sherwin was there also to help me. But I had no experience with, with mm. coaching. Mm. There's one thing that I do know. I know the players because I was mm. playing with them at yeah. yeah. uh, the previous conference. So it's really the transition from I'm playing with this team to I'm coaching this team already. And I, I can honestly say I had a hard time transitioning. There's a lot of... Um, emotional turmoil that happened also during that time. And I did make a lot of big, big mistakes as a coach. And I learned from that as well mm -hmm. during that time with, with Sila Gretchen, Z, Phil, um, Pinoc was there, Cassini Letawat was there also as our import. Mm -hmm. And there, a lot of learnings talaga, Anton, during that time. Well, what <laughs> were some of the biggest mistakes you made? I mean, th that to me like stood out from what you, what you said. What was the mistake like an example, 
And how did you learn from that mistake that you did? Um, so during that time, we were gonna, it was, I think, the semifinals, if I remember correctly, and we were playing against um, NU. Okay. And we had to beat NU twice. Uh-huh. Uh, so it's best of three, we beat them twice. Uh, I think it was their game two already. We already won one game. And then everybody's so pumped up, excited already to really get the win, finish the semis already, yeah. and then prepare for the finals. Parang ganon. But, but I remember it was NU, and then we won that game. Uh-huh. We won that game, the second game. And then everybody was celebrating, congratulating uh, each other. Ganyan. They're gonna sleep and then rest well and prepare for the next, uh, the, the finals. Na. And then I, I get a call nung gabi. Mm. And then I think it was Sir Ricky that called me. And then he said, Sharo, did you know, did you sign your, your sheet prior to the game? Sabi ko, yes, we did. Sinong linagay mong libero? And he said, I put there, uh, Denise Lazaro, ganyan, or, sorry, not Denise. Uh, was it Beatan? Basta, Beata. there was somebody that I placed there. And then, at one point, after signing that, nagkaroon ng shift dun sa, sa lineup. So, I think Bea now became a spiker or either she was a spiker and she became a libero. Something like that. Basta may something wrong kami na ginawa that we didn't tell the officials. Start ng game yun, Anton. So you're playing, ganyan. And then we won that. And then Sir Ricky called and said, the game, parang, it's, uh, what was the term that he used? Basta you were saying, forfeited? hindi kayo nanalo. Hindi kayo nanalo. It's just NU. Kasi may mali kayong ginawa. Technically. Yeah, yeah. So, Anton, oh my God, I was so devastated talaga. Like, it, emotional lang nga kami doon, the, the journey then. And I was really crying, like contemplating, how do I tell the team? How do yeah. I explain to them na I made such a stupid mistake or how come I didn't check that? How come I didn't do this and do that? So that was very hard for me. The next day, I called uh, a team meeting very early because we had to play NU again. Eh. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. parang hi, have to we have to play again. But I can all, already envision what they were gonna say. Tapos nagmay meeting kami. I didn't know like how how where do I start? What do I say? Yeah, yeah. And then I explained. I really apologized to the team. Uh, I was really the one to to blame, and I apologized to everybody. And then I said. But I believe in the team so much that even if we play and you twice, thrice, four times, five times, ten times, one hundred times, I believe in this team and I believe that this team can beat them that many times as well. So in this next game, let's beat them again. So but yeah, I I owned up to my mistake and it's really I think that's something that I learned very earlier, early, very very early very early on in, in my career. Yeah, I read about that uh, last night actually. Um, that that thing about the FIVB rules and uh, the the lineup change. So so yung palayon. So you ended up winning yes. the the third game against NU. Yeah, we did. We won. We won. And then in the finals, you played and against next, who again? And then we played in the finals. Hmm. Was it Adamson? Who did we play against? Maybe I think was it Adamson or San Sebastian, something like, or Adamson. I can't recall. Yeah. Basta pero yung game with NUI. <laughs> yun, yun, yun yung, yun yung ano eh. That was your like growth moment eh. Wow. I mean. Yeah. Yun talaga. First, oh my first, God. First, 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 ano no? First coaching stint and then yeah. yun agad. Pero at least you were able to bounce back right right, right away and uh, the way you were talking about your confidence na even if you played again, you felt like you could still come up on top. So, Wait, wait to wait to redeem yourself. Um, but but yeah. It wasn't me. It was really the team. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I hope they don't lose their yeah. confidence. Yeah, but I mean, like, props to you for for stepping up and owning up to to your mistake and being brave enough to to face the the girls, your 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 teammates now, your players. Uh, I want to ask you though, what was it like, you know, coaching? I think Eliza was on that team, but not, but she hadn't played in the UAP yet, right? She was. Yeah, yeah. She was uh, um, serving her residency. Correct, correct. Yeah, and then Z, who you know, like you spend a lot of time with now because of 
beach volleyball program. Uh, what was it like coaching them? Uh, and did you know during that time that you won that eventually Ateneo would win a UAP championship? I mean, during that moment, iba yung feeling nila. The feeling of the girls is parang, alam mo yung I get excited kasi kinikilabutan ako kasi parang it opened the, uh, the Pandora's box of them believing in themselves, of them really thinking it's possible. They can be number one. They can get the gold. And they, they can be champions because they already are. They reached that threshold. And I feel that it was because of that that made them see all the possibilities that, that can happen for, for each of them uh, individually and also as a team. So that was a very pivotal moment also for me as their ate to see them really parang they accepted na parang I'm good, I'm a champion, I can do this pala. Parang. What else, what other things can I, can I not do now that I've done this? So, yun, nakita ko yun with Eliza, with, with, with Z, with Phil, with Gretchen with Beatan, with everybody in that team. What was it like coaching Eliza during those times? Like, did you know that she would be as great as she was in, in the UAAP transitioning from UST to Ateneo? Well, coaching Eliza for me, I, I never really seen myself as a coach to her. It was more of like the Ate relationship. But um, every time that I would be there, uh, I would watch her train. I would watch her play. One thing that I like about Lai is she's a person that accepts everything. So, so she's somebody that doesn't really say no or doesn't really put boundaries. And in that, in that sense, that can be good, that can be bad. But for her, I think it became so much of a benefit because she had a lot of growth <clears throat> as a player and also as a person because of all the things that she's been accepting, yung mga opportunities, she also accepted a lot of the defeats, a lot of the lessons in her life. And I feel like being a sponsor like that, it helped propel her to become a better athlete and to become one of the best athletes also in the Philippines. Okay. If not the best. <laughs> Lastly, Charo, before we move away from this topic, uh, I, I saw this one interview where, where Ella De Jesus made a joke na about, about the jersey number because it's number eight. Din yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, was that, what was that about? And, uh, I don't about? know with her. She was, <laughs> I don't know if she was mocking me or something. Ang kukulit na mga yun, madalas nila akong lokohin. Pero number eight naman talaga siya, di ba? Sa, yeah, sa yeah, jersey. Yeah. So nahi, parang nagjo-joke lang siya na nahiya siya na she's using your number. Parang ganon. <laughs> oh, I want to say that, but we let it. Maybe you guess her next time. <laughs> uh, we, we, we've been wanting, we've been wanting to have her on the show. Like uh, the fans have been wanting a Den Den and Ella uh, episode. Yeah. So, so hopefully we can. That's have gonna that. be really fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Hopefully. Oh they, my God, I miss her. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully they can make it happen after the PVL bubble or something. But yeah, Chara. Um, uh, we, we talked about a lot of things, and again, I want to thank you so much for the time. But I can't let you go without asking you about. Perlas. Um, your official designation <laughs> okay. with Perlas is a team manager, ba? Like, uh... I'm officially their ate also. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, yes. yeah, okay, Perlas. Um, we had Nicole Tiamzon and Kathy mm -hmm. Bersola on the show, and uh, <clears throat> we asked them, um, what Perlas, what does Perlas need to do to, to get over the hump? And finally make it to the PVL finals because what did they say? Uh, you know, they they were kind of like at a loss for words and parang grasping for straws, trying to trying to figure out what it is. Like they couldn't pinpoint what it was. Eh? So now I want to ask you, uh, because I mean it seems like you have all the right things going for you, but then in the end, like you just need to get over that hump. So as their ate, ano yung nakikita mo? Because like, I'm sure from, from your perspective, it's, it's different. <laughs> well, it is very much different. Because me, I'm, I'm such an enabler. And when I, hmm. see, when I see people who, who do the things that they love and, and I see them really disciplined enough to, to do actions towards that dream or that goal, 
uh, I enable them talaga. So ako, 1,000%, I always say this, um, especially to the Pearls, the uh, Pearls team. Uh, they need to believe in themselves and in, in each other. And I feel like although they do, um, may mga moments of doubt pa rin. And that's something that we, we accept also as human beings. We, we need to be able to doubt, but we need to go past that doubt. And I mm. feel like um, being connected with each other and having um, a team that can help you. For example, Anton, uh, in this moment, you're doubting yourself. I'm a team. I know that you're already feeling that. How, what can I do to help you? Uh, even if you tell me or not. So parang it's a lot of those things that I feel um, the the indoor teams need to work on in terms of dynamics, especially for female teams. Uh, where you, you know how emotional we can be. So uh, that's something I think that the Pearls are working on in the per last bubble that they're doing now in Baguio. And I was just there recently also. Mm. And I sense a lot of deeper connections also with, with the team, especially the new players. And I'm mm. um, excited ako kasi maaga pa lang, they got to know each other na. Mm. So it, to form a strong foundation is important when you want to really go all out. And when you know that you're stepping in a battlefield that's quite um, parang heavy or mm. a, lot of, a lot of fights there. Is Kathy Bursala going to play? You didn't ask her? I mean, she, we, ha- we had her like months ago. And then she said if, oh. if the schedule permits, because, uh, because she's in med school, right? So she she if, if the schedule permits, now, she's uh, yeah. So I, I just want to get an update from you. Is, is, is she going to play? I don't know if I, I need to ask the manager if I can see. Today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, but she is, she is. She is playing now. She is. Okay, that, that, that's good news. Because uh, this is what Kathy said, uh, Charo. Ito yung sinabi ni Kathy. Kasi parang yeah. sabi niya, eventually, she wants to move on uh, from volleyball. Kasi hectic yung buhay niya. Eh. Like, if she wants to become a doctor, right? Understandable, so, yeah. Yeah, sabi niya, um, she dreams of a future wherein she'll be strong enough to let go of volleyball. Pero sabi niya... <laughs> So she's a, she also says that she's accepting the fact that she's not strong enough yet to let go. Yeah. This is okay. what she said uh, in her words. Uh, sabi niya, I want to win a PVL championship <clears throat> so yes. I can live in peace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I can live in peace now. <laughs> yun yun niya sa amin when we interview Totoo her. Yun. We have that conversation every time that we talk. Talaga. That's really it. That's what she wants. She wants that graceful exit. That's what she yeah. wants. Yeah. Leave, leave in peace. I, I'll never forget that quote <laughs> from her. All right, Charo, you talked about the fights to come in, in the PBL. <clears throat> it's going to be a war with, with 12 teams. I mean, every, everybody's in, in bubble training as of the moment, gearing up for the PBL. Like for you, who, who do you see are like the strongest uh, competitors that Perlas will have in the upcoming PVL? Like who are you well, excited we, we can, to play against? <laughs> oh, my, I'm, I'm so excited to see them play against the teams coming from uh, PSL as well because that's mm. never happened before. It's going to be the first time that we're seeing, let's say, Perlas play against Signal or mm. Perlas play against F2. And Cherry Tigo. So those are the, the games that I'm excited to also see. Apart from the PVL teams, because I don't see So I don't honestly know what to expect when, when I would watch that. But for sure, it's going to be a good games. Uh, who do you think are the favorites? Can, can you give me like, like three, three teams that you, you think are the favorites in the PVL? Like like based on <laughs> based on what you know lang right now as of the moment. <laughs> really, you're asking me that? Hello. <laughs> you're a but but choppy, I can't hear you. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> given Wait, I, given I think I'm losing you. <laughs> given given that you give given that you you're confident about the pearls. Okay, given that you're confident about okay. the pearls. All right, let me rephrase the question. Who do you think are like the three favorites that 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 uh, will stand in the way of <clears throat> Perlas reaching its goal? <laughs> the three favorites, uh, I can say based on historical data, that <laughs> it's, <laughs> I think it's Streamline, mm. F2 also, 
um, and Cherry Tigo. They have a very strong lineup as well, those three teams. But again, the, the bell curve would flatten because there's a lot of factors involved now after the pandemic. Some of the teams, they haven't started training. Some of the other teams, yung mga players nila, they're still abroad or nasa province. So, you know, there's a lot of things that can happen. It's like uh, anybody's ball game. Thank you for not disconnecting. And, uh, yeah, I know. I almost on. disconnected. You really <laughs> asked me that question. Put me on a spot. <laughs> okay, Charo. Um, okay. Super fun catching up with you. But uh, your message to everybody, the entire uh, country, because you guys will be representing them in Thailand for the AVC Continental Cup. Your, your message to everybody to, to uh, ask them to <clears throat> support you guys. Um, I would like to say thank you, first of all, to the people who supported us earlier on in our journey. Of course, um, Rubisco, Sir Jonathan Nang, they've been so helpful and they've been there every step of the way. Uh, I would also like to thank our new partners. Uh, we have new partners with the LGU. Uh, number one is, uh, of course, the province of Ilocos Norte for allowing us to train there. That's very important in our preparation for the upcoming AVC. So thank you. Um, Governor Matthew Manotok, and of course, um, everybody there who also accepted us and take everybody there who took care of us. Um, Ate Eme from Villa del Mar in Pagod Pod. Uh, she made the home, she made us feel like we were home also in her home. And nagpapasalamat ko talaga kami sa kanila. And of course, our other partners as well. Um, the city of Taguig has been there supporting us also. Uh, with a lot of things and the federation, our leaders, the NBF, thank you for allowing this to happen and thank you for working for this to happen to our young athletes. It is for me a beginning and I want everybody in, in the sports community to also see that uh, na this is the beginning of something good for volleyball and uh, as long as we start to support each other fully um, and we really reach out and be inclusive, I, I have so much hopes for the sport in the next couple of years and even longer than that. So maraming maraming salamat sa lahat ng sumuporta. Hindi po namin kayo bibiguin. We will really give our 1,000% from the staff to the coaches, to the assistant coaches, to the SNC coach, our, our PT, to the players. Everybody will go to Thailand. Um, we'll go there with pride being uh, Filipinos. So maraming maraming salamat sa inyo lahat. There you have it, guys. The program director for beach volleyball in the Philippines. Charo Soriano. Charo, thank you so much for the time and the wait was worth it. Glad to have finally had you here on uh, Volleyball <laughs> thank you, DNA. Thank you. All right, thank guys. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> yeah, no problem, no problem. And best of luck in Thailand. Guys, Charo Soriano in the lab right here on Volleyball DNA. Thank you for watching Volleyball DNA. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to get notified for future episodes and interview highlights. And while you're at it, head over to our Facebook page by clicking on the link in the description.